Greetings, my dear viewer. This is a channel about marital infidelity and about the consequences if one spouse starts to cheat on the other. If you, as well as I do, support true family values and condemn cheating, then subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. My friend, the story will be on behalf of Nancy. Let's start. Once, I first met Jordan in a noisy student bar on campus, where laughter and chatter filled the air. I had noticed him before. He often stood on the fringes of the social scene, radiating an aura of a strong, silent type. In groups, he rarely took the lead in conversations, preferring instead to engage thoughtfully, responding to questions with calm confidence. His attentive demeanor suggested a genuine interest in others, making him seem both polite and caring, a true listener in a world full of noise. But when he was alone, a different side of Jordan emerged. He would sit quietly, lost in thought, with a serious expression often tinged with sadness. It was as if he carried the weight of some unspoken story. Yet, as soon as someone approached him, a transformation occurred. His demeanor would shift, the mystery would deepen, and I found myself wanting to unravel it. One fateful day, when the bar was packed to the brim and all the tables were taken, I mustered the courage to ask if I could join him. To my surprise, he responded with a charmingly mocking formality, declaring that it would be an honor for me to sit with him, though I felt he was quite serious. As we talked, I noticed a spark of joy ignite within him. My jokes, though not the best, elicited genuine laughter, and our conversation flowed effortlessly, creating a bubble of warmth amid the surrounding noise. Time slipped away unnoticed until he reluctantly mentioned that he had to head to class. As he got up to leave, I couldn't help but tell him how much I enjoyed our conversation. So did I, he replied, a smile lingering on his lips, and I eagerly awaited our next meeting. He was simply charming. Four days later, fate led him back to the same place, and I found the courage to ask if there was room for me by his side. To my delight, he said, yes. At that moment, I felt an overwhelming urge to protect him, even if it meant putting myself at risk. As we resumed our conversation, I noticed that this time the laughter between us came much more easily. His smile lit up the space around us, and I realized I was falling for him faster than I had anticipated. After a few more chance encounters, I began to doubt whether he would ever gather the courage to ask me out. So I decided to do it myself. Hey Jordan, I said, trying to sound casual. I just bought a couple of tickets to a concert. Would you like to join me? His response caught me off guard. Don't you have a boyfriend to take you? It felt like he was searching for an escape. Look, if you don't want to go, that's fine, I replied, a bit taken aback. But I have to admit, I'm surprised that a sweet girl like you doesn't have a boyfriend. I leaned in closer, trying to gauge his interest. Come on, I know I'm good company. He chuckled, and I playfully continued. So, tell me, just how good am I? His grin widened. You're beautiful, smart, and incredibly witty. That's my favorite thing about you. I secretly hoped for something more passionate. He felt the heat rise to his cheeks and an unexpected wave of embarrassment washed over him. Kimberly, you really push me out of my comfort zone. You are incredibly attractive to me, but I want our connection to be more than just deep. He paused, searching for the right words. I want to truly get to know you, but not in that, well, you know, ambiguous way. Despite the awkwardness, excitement simmered deep within him. I'd be delighted to go to the concert with you. The night was wonderful. The music pulsed through the air as we savored the moment. We returned to campus, and laughter echoed into the night. I hugged him goodbye and my heart pounded, but his lips never touched mine, not even on the cheek. Disappointment swept over me. Am I not attractive enough? Weeks passed, filled with our constant meetings, but doubts still lingered. Jordan, don't you like me? I dared to ask, my heart racing. Of course, I really like you, he replied, but his words felt like a puzzle with missing pieces. Then why haven't you asked me on a proper date? Hesitating, he ran a hand through his hair. I want to, but it feels like we're stepping onto a path that could lead to marriage. And if that's not where we're heading, then what's the point? Thank you for taking the time to meet with me before Kimberly and I begin this new chapter. 
I wanted to talk because I believe dating is a serious matter that shouldn't be taken lightly. From my perspective, it's a path towards marriage, but only if everything falls into place perfectly along the way. How our relationship with Kimberly will unfold remains a mystery I'm eager to explore. There's one more thing I need to share. I've made the decision that I don't intend to have children with my future wife. I hope you understand that my reasons are deeply personal, and I don't wish to delve into them today. I realize how precious the thought of grandchildren is to many parents, and if that's a deal-breaker for you, I fully respect your choice and will step back from my relationship with Kimberly. After he finished speaking, there was a moment of silence before my father responded. He acknowledged that while I am an adult and capable of making my own decisions, he appreciated the courtesy Jordan showed by discussing this with them. He said he had no objections to Jordan and me dating, though he couldn't speak for my mother. Then my father added, I want Kimberly to choose her own path based on her feelings. While the idea of grandchildren is wonderful, her happiness is what truly matters. With those words, he gave me his blessing. Feeling a wave of gratitude, Jordan thanked my parents and stepped off the porch. I hugged Jordan warmly, feeling a mix of relief and excitement as we took our first steps in this new adventure together. Taken aback by his seriousness, I blinked. In what way? He sighed, his expression turning grave. Before I can seriously date someone, I need two things. First, I need to meet her parents and get their approval. Second, I must be upfront about not wanting children. Do your best. My career depends on it. These words hung in the air, heavy with meaning. I felt that this was just the beginning of a deeper conversation that we were destined to have. Take a good look at what I've just shared with you. So, if you agree, let's set a date and time for you to meet your parents. But keep in mind, even if we take this step and start dating, it doesn't mean we're automatically heading to the altar. I want you to know that I won't be going on any trip until this meeting happens. Honestly, I was at a loss for words. My previous boyfriends had avoided the thought of meeting my parents. The no kids clause was a familiar refrain, something to be revisited in the future. I wasn't particularly interested in a relationship at that time. Then Jordan came along, and he completely changed my view of men. When I dialed my parents' number, I could hear the confusion in their voices as they tried to gauge the seriousness of the situation if he wanted to meet them. Dad, in his classic style, directly asked if I was pregnant, while Mom was practically planning the wedding in her mind. So I quickly told them to hold their excitement and not jeopardize everything. And so the evening came when Jordan was supposed to meet my parents. During a light conversation, he confidently took the initiative, ready to dive into the heart of the matter. He flashed a smile that lit up the room, and I felt a flutter in my chest. This was the moment when our love story truly began. From that evening on, Jordan knew how to charm me with his words and actions. Our dates were filled with laughter and sparks, and while our kisses grew deeper and our touches more tender, we maintained boundaries that kept us from full intimacy. For a year, we were devoted to each other, and I felt like we had reached a comfortable plateau. It was a wonderful place, but I couldn't shake the feeling that we were standing still. Jordan. I said one evening, my heart pounding. I love you. If you really feel the same, then how do you see where we're going next? He looked into my eyes sincerely and replied, Kimberly, I love you more than words can express. I think it's time we talked about the future, about marriage. His revelation caught me off guard. Oh, Jordan, you're really a mystery. If you want to know my answer, just ask. All right, then I'm asking. Kimberly Cooper, will you marry me? Thoughts were swirling in my head. This was a serious step. After a moment's thought, I finally replied, Yes, I will. We tied the knot shortly after graduating from university, opting for a simple wedding to keep our finances in check. In no time, we both found promising jobs. And when it came to our intimate life, Jordan was simply amazing. He knew how to set the mood and build anticipation so that every moment together was full of energy. He defied all my expectations, showing a boldness I never expected from the seemingly innocent guy I had taken him to be. Jordan never spoke about his past relationships or encounters, 
and the topic of my own history was a silent agreement between us that remained untouched. But what stood out was his remarkable contribution to the household. He eagerly took on chores and often checked to make sure he was keeping up with his responsibilities. My culinary skills garnered endless praise, and my ability to maintain order in our home while ensuring equally impressive intimate moments made my female colleagues green with envy. Our home was a lively place, a vibrant mix of communication, affection, passion, and laughter. To save a few dollars, we opted for cozy evenings at home instead of dining out, enjoying board and card games that sparked a spirit of competition. Every Friday evening turned into a cherished ritual, involving an old DVD, popcorn, and cozy snuggles on the couch. But what truly caught me by surprise was Jordan's playful side. He became a master of teasing and pranks. I always prided myself on my wit, but he quickly matched me, turning our home into a playground for laughter and mischief. It felt like we celebrated April Fool's Day at least once a month, and I smile now, remembering the delightful pranks we came up with together. Nearly three years had passed since our wedding, and life took an unexpected turn. A serious incident loomed over me, filling my heart with dread at the thought of losing my husband. Despite diligently taking my pills, fate had other plans. I found out I was pregnant. A visit to the doctor confirmed my fears, and the weight of this news was unbearable. The thought of telling him paralyzed me with fear. Desperately wanting to preserve our bond, I buried the secret deep inside until morning sickness became impossible to hide. One morning, noticing my struggle, he gently asked what was wrong. In that moment, the floodgates opened. I stammered, I'm pregnant. I'm so sorry. Tears streamed down my face, each one a mixture of joy and fear. Jordan's face remained impassive, the mask of calm only intensifying my anxiety. After a long pause, he finally said, Let's take a breath and talk about this later. It took me several minutes to gather my thoughts, my heart pounding wildly. When I was finally ready, he asked the question that hung in the air. What do you really want? With trembling breath, I replied, Jordan, I really want to have this baby. If you feel differently, I'm prepared to honor the promise we made, to live without children. I could consider adoption, but I can't bring myself to have an abortion. Tomorrow hung by a thread, and I could only hope that our love would guide us through this uncharted territory. The power to decide our future is in your hands, whether we embrace the joy of parenthood or let go and choose adoption. My heart sincerely hopes that we choose to keep our child. Kimberly, I share your belief that every life is precious, and your desire to keep the baby deeply moves me. It speaks to the profound love we share in our marriage. I wholeheartedly believe I will support you as you've always supported me. I know that for our joint prosperity, I will need to make sacrifices, including stepping away from my previous role. Your happiness is incredibly important to me, and I stand by your decision to keep this child. I vow to be the best father imaginable. There will never be a hint of disappointment in my words. Overcome with emotion, I threw myself into his arms tears of joy streaming down my face. After Layla was born, she was nothing short of a miracle, radiant and perfect. Jordan kept the promise he made to me, and I couldn't have wished for a more devoted father for our daughter. Just a year later, he surprised me in a way I never expected. I never thought it was a good idea to grow up as an only child. So when the suggestion came up, I was intrigued. How about giving her a sibling in a year or so? It seemed like the perfect plan. After all, I could take a break from work and focus on motherhood for a while. And as for Jordan, he said he would get a vasectomy after the second child was born. I was stunned by his certainty. All I could say in response was, okay. Before I knew it, Sarah was born. I left work for a few years, immersing myself in the joys and challenges of motherhood, and eventually returned to my previous job. Throughout this time, I noticed no issues in Jordan's relationship with his parents. However, this didn't mean I didn't have suspicions about Jordan. Sometimes I felt that something was off, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. Even back in college, I had seen him sit alone, lost in thought, with a distant look in his eyes. At times, this solemnity would overwhelm him, bringing him to tears. He was everything one could wish for in a husband, kind, 
supportive and loving, yet deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that he was hiding something from me, from our marriage, and from our family. It seemed as though he wasn't ready to fully embrace his role as my husband and the father of our daughters. But I still counted my blessings, as I had more cherished memories of our marriage than many of my friends. Now, with both daughters happily married, I was contemplating a new chapter as an empty nester. I recalled the thrilling dates and fireworks of our early days together. The first year of our marriage was spent almost in a blissful bubble, rarely leaving the sanctuary of our bedroom on weekends. But as the years went by, the responsibilities of raising two children, working and juggling bills, gradually deflated the excitement we once shared, like a balloon slowly losing air. I couldn't help but long for those carefree days when it was just the two of us, laughing and enjoying each other's company. Now, as I searched for a new purpose, I felt a definite emptiness that had once been filled by our children. How could I now fill that void? The thought of an affair briefly crossed my mind, especially given the attention I still received from some undeniably charming men. Despite my age, I found that I still attracted interest. Some of them seemed to think that my marriage added to my allure rather than diminished it. There were fleeting moments when the right man and the right situation made me think I could stray in such a way that my husband would never find out. But I always held back, content to flirt with the idea rather than cross the line. We often joked that we had our little office romance, calling each other office wife and office husband. When I noticed that Jordan intrigued me, I would often steal glances at him when he wasn't looking. Sometimes I caught him staring off into the distance, a shadow of sadness clouding his features. I would gently ask if something was bothering him, but he always brushed it off, saying, Nothing. Deep down, I felt that there was more beneath the surface. Deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that he was carrying some unspoken tragedy from his past, a burden he wasn't ready to share. It made me feel helpless. And then one day, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. What we missed the most was laughter. Our days had once been filled with it. Jordan knew how to make me laugh, and I gladly returned the favor. My laughter was one of those unforgettable snorts. When I caught my breath during it, I sounded like a piglet. That ridiculous sound would send us into fits of giggles, often leaving us both in tears from laughing. For years, we kept the spirit of fun alive, teasing each other as the kids grew up. But lately, it felt like that joyful tradition was fading. I realized it was time to rekindle the laughter that once filled our days. We used to believe that we had to be the role models our children looked up to. As spring approached, I realized it was the perfect moment to revive our lives with some exciting gifts. Spring was just around the corner, and who knows, maybe it would breathe new life into our marriage. In the weeks leading up to April Fool's Day, I threw myself into planning a grand giveaway, while also sharing stories about a new guy at the office who had all the women swooning. I couldn't resist bragging about Nicholas and his electrifying dance moves at the office party which Jordan unfortunately couldn't attend. To add some spice to my routine, I started working extra hours and hosting weekly girls' nights. When I got home, I would take a refreshing shower to wash away the day's stress, and then I would go to bed. But our intimacy began to fade. I found myself gradually pulling away from physical closeness with Jordan, coming up with excuses to keep him at a distance. I became increasingly critical of his efforts around the house, often grumbling that I had to redo his chores because they just weren't up to standard. It turned into a game. I would burn dinner or serve it undercooked, and he would express his growing frustration. And yet, he stayed silent, simmering beneath the surface. Finally, when April arrived, a mix of nerves and anticipation bubbled up inside me. When the clock struck six in the evening, the doorbell rang. Hey, Jordan, could you get that? It's probably for you. I called out, a smirk playing on my lips. Seriously, Kimberly, you're just in the next room, he replied, his exhaustion evident. I'm tired, he muttered, and I couldn't help but feel a thrill from the unfolding chaos. Come on, it wouldn't hurt you to do something nice for me just this once, I teased as Jordan reluctantly headed to the door. I knew what surprise awaited him on the other side. Standing there was a woman about our age, 
holding a mysterious package in her hands, looking down at the floor, a stance I hadn't expected from a delivery person. Jordan cleared his throat as he approached her. Hi, how can I help you? Are you Jordan Torres? she asked, still avoiding his gaze. Yes, he replied, raising an eyebrow. Can you show me some ID? With a mix of curiosity and anticipation, he pulled out his wallet and showed her his driver's license. I could barely contain my excitement. The real climax was just around the corner. Did you attend high school in Texas? She asked, her voice steady yet laced with urgency. Her question caught me off guard. It seemed out of place. Well, yes. Why do you ask? Jordan responded, a hint of confusion in his tone. Do you know a girl named Molly Wilson? The room was suddenly filled with a palpable tension. I stood up, instinctively drawn to the unfolding drama. Jordan's expression shifted from curiosity to concern. Yes, we met. But she's dead. Unspoken words hung heavy in the air as she finally looked up and met his gaze. I have some difficult news. She died many years ago. But then, with a surge of energy that made my heart race, she declared, I'm alive, Jordan. I'm here, and more alive than ever. Jordan stared at her, disbelief written all over his face as the weight of her revelation sank in. His eyes reflected shock, and I feared he might collapse right there on the spot. Oh my God! Is it really you? Tears streamed down her face. But your parents told me you were dead. They said you died because of me. It was all a lie, she admitted, her voice trembling. They just didn't want you to look for me. In an instant, he pulled her close, their bodies colliding in a desperate embrace. The kiss was so passionate it felt like the world around them faded away. I thought I'd lost you forever. Please, come inside before I have a heart attack, I stammered, unable to contain my excitement. They moved to the couch, settling beside each other like two love-struck teenagers, fingers entwined and giggling, their laughter echoing through the room. I felt like a ghost in my own space, and anger surged within me. I couldn't stay silent any longer. Excuse me, you too. Jordan, can you explain what the hell is going on? Who is this woman and why are you practically all over her? Kimberly, this is Molly Wilson, my first and only true love, he announced, his voice a mixture of joy and sorrow. The one I never spoke of because it was too painful to remember. I thought she was gone forever. Her being here feels like a miracle. Your only true love? I echoed, the words hanging in the air like an unwelcome ghost. I'm sorry, but who am I? Let me take you back to a time when everything was filled with energy and promise. In high school, Molly and I were a whirlwind of passion, completely consumed by our love. We were convinced we'd get married right after graduation and start a beautiful life together. But there was a shadow over us, her parents. They were staunch conservatives and saw me as nothing more than a reckless fling for their daughter. Our love was a secret, hidden from prying eyes. Under the cover of darkness, Molly would sneak out, and our late-night meetings were filled with an exhilarating sense of rebellion. With each forbidden moment, the thrill of intimacy became more intoxicating, drawing us closer and closer. Then came the day we were caught off guard. We made a reckless choice that would change everything. Molly got pregnant. Our dreams of running away and starting a life together began to take shape, but they clashed with harsh reality. At her age, Molly couldn't sign a marriage license without her parents' consent. We hoped that her pregnancy and our love would sway them, but when she finally mustered the courage to tell them, it was like a dam burst. They took her away, leaving our dreams hanging by a thread, and I was left alone, with a broken heart and a desperate hope for a future that suddenly seemed out of reach. Until that moment, I knew nothing about her. A few months after they left, her parents reached out with devastating news. Molly had passed away, overwhelmed by the shame of giving birth to an illegitimate child. Tragically, the child died with her. Jordan's heart shattered upon hearing this, and tears streamed down his face as he turned in agony towards Molly. What happened to our child? Did you have an abortion? He asked, his voice trembling. Not exactly, she replied, regret lacing her tone. I couldn't bring myself to do it, and my parents wouldn't allow it. 
Everyone was told that my husband died in the line of duty. But the truth is, our son is alive and thriving. He's grown up, and now he's a self-sufficient man, both a husband and a father. A bitter pride flashed in her eyes. He has my intelligence and your athletic build. I hope you'll get the chance to meet him soon. He was eager to meet you when I told him about you after my parents' funeral. Driven by curiosity, Jordan asked, What is his name? A thoughtful smile appeared on her lips. I wanted to name him after you when he was born, but my parents wouldn't hear of it. Until recently he was just Marcus, but now, with his enthusiastic blessing, he's officially become Jordan Jr. Tears flowed down Jordan's face like a child who had just lost a beloved toy. I struggled to contain my excitement. Is this really happening? Someone pinch me? I still can't make sense of this whirlwind of events. I spoke, but doubt crept into my soul. Jordan, this has gone on long enough. We need to ask this woman to leave our home, and we need to do it now. We have serious matters to discuss, just the two of us. I had never seen such fierce determination on Jordan's face before. No way. I lost Molly once. I won't let it happen again. I sat there, frozen in bewilderment. Jordan's questions came in a torrent. What happened to you after they took you away? The weight of my past hung in the air as I recalled the ultimatum my parents had given me. Leave with them or live without their support. I was just a pregnant girl adrift in a stormy sea with no lifeline except my family's support. Life dealt me a harsh blow, leaving me unable to support myself, let alone a family. The pain of being separated from you was unbearable but I felt cornered. I made a pact with them to stay away, a promise made to keep our child from being taken away for adoption. For forty years, I endured a nightmare. Without our son, I can't imagine how I would have managed. My thoughts often turned dark, thinking of how to escape this life. I constantly fought the urge to reach out to you, but the fear of losing Marcus kept me silent. They watched me closely, controlling my every move, and I was cut off from the outside world. No mobile phone, no money of my own, no communication with anyone unless they were by my side. It was suffocating. I was even regularly subjected to lie detector tests, interrogated about any attempts to contact you. Three months ago, everything changed when my parents died in a car accident. In that moment of despair, a glimmer of hope ignited within me. A hope to see you again something I had buried deep inside for so long. Jordan, over the past few months, I've been gathering information about you, bit by bit, driven by an unquenchable longing. When I found out you were married, a wave of doubt overwhelmed me. I hesitated, afraid that I might disrupt your happiness. But the thought of finally reuniting with you pushed me forward. I didn't reveal the truth directly, but instead watched you and your home trying to gauge the state of your marriage. I must admit, deep down, I secretly hoped you weren't happy in it. Then, out of nowhere, a young woman approached my car and asked if I knew where Jordan Torres lived. I pointed to your house and she muttered, Damn it. I can't stand getting bad news, she said, disappointment lacing her tone. Your wife has filed for divorce. At that moment, it felt like a divine sign that the universe had aligned things in a way I never dared to dream. I had an urge to slip her a small bribe, whispering that if your wife left you, maybe I could revive our chance together. What happened next caught me completely off guard. She handed you a package. Jordan, you've been served, she said as you took it, a puzzled expression crossing your face. Panic washed over me and I shouted, please don't open it. It's a joke, just ignore it. But as you began reading the document, I saw the anger growing within you. If it weren't for Molly showing up just in time, that scrap of divorce paper would have broken my heart. Kimberly, how could you be so cruel? You exclaimed, disbelief evident in your voice. But now I felt a strange sense of relief. I no longer felt any guilt about Molly and me. Jordan turned to her, taking her hands in his. And in that moment, everything changed. I beg you, tell me you're not married, Jordan asked, a mix of hope and fear in his voice. Of course not, she replied, 
his eyes locking onto hers with such sincerity that my heart pounded. I've never been with another man. Does it upset you that I got married? I recoiled, realizing the absurdity of the situation. You thought I was dead. You had every reason to survive. I can't blame you for that, she said, her voice steady but filled with unspoken emotions. And then, in a moment that felt both surreal and electrifying, he said, Molly Wilson, will you marry me? My reaction was one of bewilderment. What did you just say? Of course! I exclaimed, hugging him in sheer delight. And suddenly, reality crashed down on me like a cold wave. You can't marry her for God's sake! You're still married to me! Not for long, he replied, pulling out a pen and swiftly signing the divorce papers. It's done. No, this can't be happening, I protested, panic rising within me. I'm not giving up on this marriage. We're still together. Wonderful, he said with a smirk. At the first opportunity, I'll file for divorce myself and leave you with nothing. Molly, trying to defuse the escalating tension, intervened. Jordan, don't make this all about money. I have a good job, and my parents left me a decent inheritance. You have the chance to leave everything to her, and we'll be just fine. At that moment, the air was thick with unresolved emotions and the weight of a choice that would change everything. A storm of rage engulfed me. What about me? We've spent 35 happy years together. The only thing I truly need is him, his presence, not wealth or property. Damn it, Jordan. We've spent so many years building a life together and raising two beautiful daughters. I wonder what they will think when they find out their father has decided to leave me for an old flame. Kimberly, you filed for divorce, and it's clear you've decided I'm no longer your husband. Your intentions are crystal clear. The new guy at work has stolen your heart, and I can only assume you've already fallen for him. I believe our daughters will understand me once I tell them the whole truth. In time, they might even warm up to Molly and their new brother. To be honest, I told you it was just an April Fool's joke. I never intended to file for divorce. And the idea of changing jobs was just a front. I couldn't wait to do something outrageous, to pull one of my classic stunts and reignite the spark in our marriage. But it seemed like you extinguished that flame, and I couldn't shake the feeling that your actions were aimed at wanting me only when someone else showed interest. Molly, give me a moment to grab a few things, Jordan said, trying to collect his thoughts. She headed upstairs to our bedroom, and the atmosphere was tense. Molly broke the silence first. Mrs. Torres, I really didn't mean to hurt you, but Jordan and I share something deep, something that feels destined. You should cherish the years you had with him. I would give anything to have lived those years fully with him, she blurted out, boiling with frustration. Instead, the last forty years have turned into a nightmare. I love him more than anything, and now you come barging in like a heartless thief. I could just scream. Threats and desperation won't change anything, Molly responded, her voice steady. This is our moment, one I've waited for far too long. We deserve a chance at happiness, and I won't let you stand in our way. What about my happiness? I replied, feeling the weight of betrayal. What did I do to deserve this? What are you complaining about? She snapped, her voice sharp as a knife. If I hadn't found out you were divorcing, I wouldn't have even thought of speaking to him. Are you even listening? It was just a joke, a harmless April Fool's prank. It's almost funny how pathetic you've become. How can you cause such pain to someone you claim to love more than anything? Your cruelty is astounding. Honestly, I hope this is the last time we cross paths. But I won't hold my breath. I'll put all my energy into fighting this sham divorce. Jordan walked into the room with bags in his hands and turned to me with a serious expression. I know this might seem sudden, he said, his voice heavy with emotion, but I can't stop thinking about Molly. Those moments of sadness? They were tied to losing her and our child. Kimberly, you were very dear to me. I genuinely cared, until these last few months. And to be honest, I'm not shocked that you filed for divorce. It was clear you were drifting away, convinced that there were better prospects among the men in your office. I had my suspicions about those late-night work meetings. But let's make one thing clear. I promise to be honest throughout this process. Perhaps it would be better if we cut off all contact, except through our lawyers, he continued, his tone turning icy. Molly, 
Shall we go see our son now? Of course, darling, she replied, and there was a warmth in her voice that made me pause. They shared a kiss that sparked a flash of jealousy in me. I couldn't recall him ever kissing me with such passion. They headed towards their cars, she walking ahead and he following behind. So much for my clever April Fool's joke. And then it hit me. What a fool I'd been. Jordan had played me like an April Fool. I burst into laughter, realizing that this time the cunning son of a gun had truly outdone himself. I couldn't help but wonder where he found Molly, or whatever her name was, who had played her part so convincingly. She was indeed a remarkable actress. I half expected them to return for dinner, reveling in their triumph over my gullibility. But as the morning dragged on, it became clear they weren't coming back. Damn. They were really committed to this charade. The final blow came when the divorce papers arrived in the mail. This wasn't some elaborate prank. This was the harsh reality of my life. I fought against the divorce, throwing counteroffers around like confetti, but it soon became painfully clear that Jordan, Molly, and their new little family had already built a life together without me. Defeated, I sold the house and moved closer to my daughters, who, to my horror, welcomed their new stepmother and older brother with open arms. For them, it was a beautiful reunion, a milestone moment in their young lives. And as for me, I felt nothing but the sting of betrayal, and the sympathy I had so hoped for was nowhere to be found. After our divorce, life for me remained mostly unchanged, except for the delightful presence of my grandchildren, who bring hints of joy to the polite family gatherings we still hold together. Yet when April first rolls around, a shadow crosses my heart, a bittersweet reminder of the chaos that once engulfed my life. Though, in the end, it wasn't entirely my fault. Who could have thought that reconnecting with a long-lost love and a son we both believed was gone would lead to such a whirlwind of events? We would have divorced eventually anyway, but I certainly sped up the process with my shameful prank. Nowadays, I steer clear of April Fool's jokes. Trust me, you don't want to go down that road. So, if you want to avoid the heartbreak of being betrayed again, don't joke with people you're afraid to lose. My friend, and this is the end of the story. If you liked this story, then put your royal like and subscribe to the channel. May the force be with you.